video we're going to be taking a look at two different ways to create this looping background. What's up everyone my name is Shaw Gonsalves from Animation Deconstructed and if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe and turn that bell notification on. We're going to jump straight into it but in this first part we're going to be taking a look at how to create this video using Particular. So inside After Effects I'm going to create a new composition I'm going to call this background. 1920 by 1080p 30 frames per second and let's make this 14 seconds long. My loop is actually going to be half of that seven seconds. I'm going to press OK. Let's just zoom in here. Right click, create a new solid, and we're going to call this BG. And this can be any color. I'm going to come across to effects and presets, and let's type in gradients, and we're going to add a gradient ramp. I'm going to double click that. I want to change the linear ramp to radial ramp. And I'm going to pull this down to the bottom and pull this one up to the top right corner. Let's just choose two different colors. I'm going to make this a purple. It's pretty dark over here. I'm going to spot this purple and I'm going to make it even darker. Just tweak this one a little bit more as well. In order to create these particle systems, I need a particle. So we're going to create a new composition call this particle and this is going to be pretty small let's say about 600 by 40 pixels and press OK. I'm going to zoom in here and just with the pen tool I'm going to draw a line across here. Let's take the fill off we don't need that we just need a stroke so I'm going to turn the stroke on. 18 pixels seems to be pretty good and I'm going to use the U key and press it twice to bring up the options Twirl the stroke up and then twirl it down again to reveal all the properties for the stroke. We're going to change the butt cap to a round cap and we should be left with something like this. You can close this composition and just come into the project panel and drag it down into our scene. We can also just hide it. And now to create our particular system, we're going to right click, create a new solid and call this particular one. I'm going to change the color of this just so that I can see it better in the timeline. Press OK. And then under Effects and Presets, I'm going to type in Particular. That can also be found under Effect, RG Trap Code, Particular. Let's move ahead of time and we'll see that the particle system starts forming. The first thing I want to do is actually just get the angle of this right. So we're going to have particles shooting from the bottom left to the top right. In order to do this, I want to change the direction to directional. Then I want to take the direction spread right off. So this is actually going to open up that cone shape and close it down. So right now these particles are coming towards us and we need to just rotate this around. So on the X axis, if we swing this up, we can actually point this upwards. So let's make that 90 degrees. And then on the Y, I'm going to make this 45 degrees so it is just shooting to the top right. The next thing I want to do is actually create how big this emitter is. What I'm going to do is take the velocity right down to zero, change my emitter type to a box. And if I drag up on this, you can see that it's a perfect box right over there. And this is controlled by the emitter size X, Y, Z. We can unlink these by just dropping this down and choosing individual. And I want this to be a long particle emitter going from this end over here down to the bottom here, emitting particles moving to the top right. So I'm going to adjust a few things. The Z size I'm going to take right down. Then I'm going to take the X size right up. So it goes past both sides. And the Y size, this is going to create that 3D depth of these particles in the space. So let's make this about 2000 and then move this particle system down. You can see how far this goes into the back now. I'm going to come down to my particle. I'm going to change it from sphere to sprite to colorize. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to color the particle which we've created, this over here. I'm going to go down to texture, change the layer to our particle, and just wait for it to update. And you'll see these are really small. The first thing that particular does that I don't like is that it turns on this collapse transformations on the particle. If we turn this off, you'll see our particles become a lot bigger already. Next thing I want to do is take the size up. And I think around 200 is where I had it. I've got way too many particles here. So I'm going to take this down to about 9 per second. I'm also just going to take my velocity up slightly. So about 5. And this will allow me to rotate these to the direction of our velocity. And if I had to drag up, you can see the velocity is 
blowing up to the top right. So leaving it at five, I'm going to come down to where we're in the particle master again, drop down the rotation and turn on the orient to motion. And now we can see that it's angled towards the top right. We can twirl that back up and let's play with some of these size parameters. Let's change the size random to be 50%. And then let's drag up on the velocity. I'm gonna make it about 365 over there and we'll see if this works out. I want my loop to be about seven. So if we watch at the beginning here, these are gonna turn off because the life is three seconds. So let's just change that to about 10 seconds. And if I drag up here, First of all, our emitter is too far into the scene. Let's go to about here where they start creating and just drag this off. That should be about fine. I want my loop to be at seven seconds. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to keyframe one frame before the seven seconds. And you can use the page up and page down buttons to move backwards and forwards one keyframe. I'm going to keyframe one second before seven seconds page up until we're on seven seconds and I'm going to turn this off to zero. Now if we scroll forward, these should all be gone by the end of the scene. And let's actually make this emitter X a lot bigger. So around about here should be good. And now we should fill our whole scene in. We do need to change the color so I'm going to zoom back in and we can add both our colors inside particular so that it randomizes these particles for us. So what I'm going to do is come to the set color, change this to random from gradient, go down to the color over life and let's pull some of these off. We don't need them. I'm going to double click this, change this to a pink and then I'm going to change this one to a light cyan. I'm going to pull these into the middle until they almost touch and we should split that graph in two. Now just to add some more randomizing, I'm going to add just a few more of these and we should get quite a nice random color variance over time. Next thing, with my layer selected, I'm just going to hit the star key to add a little marker on this and this will help me just position my loop. And I'm going to duplicate this layer and because this is starting at zero, and it's getting up to seven seconds and then it's turning off and these live until 14 seconds. The theory is that you should be able to drag this over to the seven seconds so that as this one's dying, this one is starting to produce particles again. And this will be a perfect loop. Pressing the B key to set our begin frame. I'm going to press the space bar to play this. It's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to just add the glow so I'm going to right click, new adjustment layer. Let's just save control S, come over to the effects and presets, type in glow, and let's make this, let's bring this down to about 45 and take this up to about 25. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna duplicate this for an extra glow and just take this up to, let's say around number 100. And that looks pretty good to me. If you're finding this tutorial helpful, please click the like button. In the second part, we're going to be taking a look at how we can recreate this look by using Particle World. I'm going to right click and create a new solid. I'm going to call this Particle World. I'm also just gonna double click on the work area so that it expands. I'm going to go over to the effect simulation and we're going to choose CC Particle World. Now we need to change a few things straight away. Let's drop down the physics. We don't need any gravity in this. So we're going to come over here, turn that off. Also don't need any extra on this. And when we make this a directional particle system, the extra is going to actually open up the cone shape like we had in particular. So I'm going to take that down to zero. Let's actually make this a directional particle system. Can show you that extra just by showing you here. It opens up. The biggest issue is that we're unable to actually shoot it up and to the right. What I want to do is just zoom out slightly and we're going to create a very big particle emitter like this. And this is found under the producer and we can actually type in some values here. So I'm going to zoom back in. Let's change the birth rate so we can take this right down. We don't need so many particles. 0 0.05, try that. Then let's change our particle so that we actually see it. I'm gonna drop this down. The one we need to select in order to select our particle that we created is textured square. 
this will enable us to drop this down and then pick our particle now it'll be really small for now so i'm going to change the birth size let's make this something like 1.2 and 1.2 let's also just drag this across so we can see what we're doing and let's change the actual producer size so I'm going to change the X radius down to zero. So I want this really flat. And then I'm going to change the Y drag up on this. Let's say about 0.600. And then the Z axis, I'm going to really drag this out so it goes into the distance. And if I, let's make this 0.400 for now. So this is at this angle right here. Let's make this birth rate actually 0.1 for now so that we can see it a bit better. Let's come down to size variation and bring this up so that we can see our particles a bit more. And then I'm going to drag this off and to the left. So somewhere around so that we don't actually see our particles turning on. Next, let's just make our max opacity 100 because at the moment they had some transparency to them. Let's also change the color map to origin constant and this will make them green. So I'm going to press Control Shift Y to go into the layer properties and I'm going to make this white and this will just make it a lot easier for us to control the color later. Let's go to the top here and we can actually turn off our grid so we don't see it any longer. We need to change the velocity and the longevity. So velocity I'm going to take up just to, let's actually take it down to 0 0.1 and let's make this live 10 seconds long as well. Let's press play just need a lot less of these and we also need to make sure that these are getting to the end so i'm going to come over to the velocity and i'm just going to hold the control button so that we're slowly incrementing it and i want the first particle to go off that'll give us a good indicator of how fast these need to be to get from the one side to the other side let's press page up and we're going to click on the birth rate turn on the stopwatch let's actually take this down to 0 0.05 again that's plenty for our one color press page down so that we move ahead once and turn this to zero so we turn it off if i press u you can see those two keyframes right there and to move across and as you can see they're not off the screen yet so we just need to increase the velocity slightly holding control it's going to drag forward slightly and that will be the first part of our loop now the way we're going to add our color in this is by just adding a fill coming over to the effects and presets typing fill and then just dragging this on I'm going to choose a pink color for this and with the layer selected i'm just going to press the star key so that we can see where the loop begins i'm also going to change our layer label color just so that we can see it better i'm going to make it to cyan then i'm going to Control d to duplicate this i'm going to change the color to a bluish color and then we don't need to do a lot here we can just drop down the extras come over to random seed let's choose something maybe 12 that's looking pretty good. I'm going to duplicate the first one again so that we've got more pink particles. I just want to fill in some of these gaps. Go to extras and let's just type in maybe 10 this time. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to right click, create a new null object. I'm going to link all these layers to it. And let's actually duplicate them as well and then move them over so that we've got a perfect loop. I'm now going to use the null, press R for rotation, and we're going to input minus 45 degrees to get that same angle. Press the shift and S key to bring up the scale. I'm going to zoom out here, and then I'm going to take this up until it fills the screen. Pressing the B key to set our begin frame. I'm going to zoom back in. I'm going to turn the glow on. And this is pretty much how you'd create it with just the After Effects particle systems. If you want to see more videos like this, take a look at either of the videos pitching up on screen right now. Keep animating, and until next time.